How's it going guys? Today we're talking about uh, lobworms or earthworm. Two words for you. Old school. This is really the oldest way of fishing and um, it's never disappointing. I use them for fishing on perch on my local canal and I use them to teach my kids how to fish as a first experiment. You don't, wanna, you don't want your kids messing with lures as they first go, all the hooks and everything going on there. It's a bit of a safer and easier way. And um, yeah, I like to experiment with different types of, uh, of worms, as you can see in this short video clip. It's always fun to, to try something new. So that's the topic of the day. It's a very versatile method as well. You can catch a lot on it. If it's crappy, carp, largemouth, smallmouth, perch, uh, what's out there, uh, trout, loads of stuff. So I'm going to show you how to rig them, first of all, and we'll talk about a few must know tips when you're doing that that will help you or increase your chances of catching so stick around okay so we're gonna move this operation indoors because my neighbors start to uh, mess around a bit in the garden making lots of noise this is gonna be easier let's start with a few um, a few basic rules a few basic tips when it comes to hooks uh, you typically want to use hook number six or seven, uh, eight. You can also get away with a nine. It kind of depends on what type of fish you're targeting. If it's panfish, you probably want to go with, uh, with a seven. Another thing is that you, well, let's take a bigger hook so I can show you. Well, assuming you know it's a barbed hook, you want to use, let me do this. It's a little bit difficult. So you, you want to use a barbed hook. The reason is that it's harder for the lobworm to escape that point, right? So let's focus for a second. You've got this piece here, and when you dress, when you uh, fit the lobworm on, it kind of kind of can slide from it. So the barb the barb is helping you to um, to keep it keep it hooked nicely on the um, on the hook. So for this example, I'm actually going to use um, a size. What is it? Size 11, and I'm going to play with worms at home. Wife and kids are not around, so I'm allowed. Just don't tell anybody. Okay, guys, I had to change that that uh, hook because the size 11 was just too big. I took a size nine now. It's still a bit too big, but you know, between between trying to get close to the zoom of the camera and my fat fingers, I think it should work. So um, what I want to show you now is how I'm rigging. And what's really important to know, and another another important tip is that you want to keep that worm looking as natural as possible. You don't want to twist it around five times looking like a pretzel. You want to present a really natural presentation to the fish. That's what they're going to bite on, and that's going to increase your chances on uh, getting bites. So we'll take. Um, we're not using very big worms today for this demonstration. I'm going to take this one. Um, I actually already pre-cut it and. That's because I wanted to fit it. As you can see, it will still wiggle around. It's not dead or something. But it's just going to be easier to show you what it is that I'm doing here. So I'm taking the hook. And I'm taking the worm from, from the, the thicker side, let's call it. I'm going to pierce it now. And I'm going to dress it. I'm going to dress the hook with it in a way that is not exposed anymore. Just like so. Okay, it might take a little bit, you'll get used to it, you'll master it, and voila. That's what we end with in this case. You see, there is, there is a hook here, the, the worm is on top, and the point is just right here. And I'm going to break it now to show you. Up. And the reason I do it like that is that when a fish will come and bite it, it will, it will actually, you will be able to set the hook. You don't have to worry about it. Those worms are, it just goes through them like butter. You don't have to worry about it. It's more important that the hook will not be visible rather than um, worrying about uh, not being able to hook the fish. Now let's talk about an application when you want to uh, rig a larger worm and again, smaller hook. Uh, and you don't want to cut the worm, maybe it puts you off, or maybe you feel sorry for the worm, or whatever. If you would sorry, feel sorry for the worm, you probably won't hook it uh, at the first place. Well, we'll take this one. It's a nice size. It's not too thick, as you can see. And it's long enough. 
So the other method I'll use is the twisting. But again, not excessive twisting, not five twists. That's just, uh, that's really just, just too much. So you find again, you find the, the thicker part. It's normally a bit darker towards the head. Take the hook, pinch it just once. Don't break the worm, just bring it down. Start carrying it down a little bit like that. And then twist it once. It will twist itself, don't worry about it. Twist it once. Take the part up, twist it second time, but on the second time, try to hook it like so from the side. Like that. Pinch it from the side. And the reason is because you're gonna pull it just like before, not to expose the hook. Well, this one didn't went as I expected, but okay, here. And I'm gonna try to bring it down, covering the hook again with a smaller hook. It won't be that exposed, but you'll end up with something like that, but without showing this part. So two twists, take it down, leave the hook unexposed. And if you don't if you don't believe me that you'll be able to hook because the hook is not exposed, then look, I just I'll take my finger just like that. Tuck. As soon as I just touch it, right, it just goes through it. What do you think is going to happen when uh, when your perch or your carp or whatever it is, you're just going to go and bite it? This is, uh, this is going to hook him like super easy. <clears throat> right, something about worms. That's going to be interesting for you. For all of those watching this video now thinking, he's torturing those poor worms, they must be feeling so much pain. There's been experiments done about this topic and worms, they don't feel pain. They actually hook them up. They hook them with fishing hooks and they measured, I don't know how they did it. The result was that the worms are very sensitive to temperature. When you hold it with your fingers and you push that um, cold metal uh, hook through their bodies, the difference of temperature just makes them go ballistic. And that's, the, that's why they twist and they wiggle. Um, well, never mind that because you're gonna hook them, then drown them, and then feed them to fish later. So the torture is there as it is, but I thought it's an interesting fact to share with you. That's it for today, guys. Short, efficient, and to the point, like always. Now, if you like this one, just hit the click button, leave me a comment, let's have a chat, and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see some more of those tutorials and all kind of short tips for fishing, packing, filming, and more. Till then, stay safe and go fishing. Bye-bye.